Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRlounge.com and in this video we're going to show you how to photograph a meteor shower. All right, so here we have this panoramic photo of the stars rotating in the sky around the North Star. You can see it up here in the center. And then on the right here, there's a meteor streaking through the sky, a shooting star. And if I hit L here to exit out of the light box mode or whatever it is, you can see that it was taken at ISO 200, 452 seconds at F2 and 16 millimeters. And if you could also see the other information, you would see that it was taken on a Nikon D7100, which is a crop sensor camera. So that means that this is the new Rokinon 16mm f2 lens. It's incredibly sharp. I'm really loving using it. So what I did was I created a panorama here, and one of my panoramic images just happened to capture this meteor. Now, of course, I say it happened to capture the meteor, but it actually takes a lot of planning and calculation and certainly a lot of trial and error in order to capture a meteor shower or a meteor like this. So let's jump into how on earth would you do it? Well, basically, for star photos in general, you're going to be shooting at higher ISOs usually and faster apertures if you want to actually see the Milky Way. Now, in this photo, it's blurring it that stars are streaking through the sky because I had a 450 second exposure because I was at ISO 200. If I were at ISO 3200, I would have had a lot uh, faster shutter speed, like 30 seconds or one minute, instead of this uh, seven, seven and a half minute exposure here. So I was doing that on purpose. I wanted the stars to rotate through the sky in this image so that you could tell which star was the North Star. But if my goal was to capture this meteor as bright as possible, I would have to think of it as a flash, like lightning or an actual camera flash which is it comes in a very short, elusive burst, and it's very difficult to capture it that way with uh, shorter shutter speeds. So you would think, okay, let's just do you know 450 second exposures, and that way I'll just take a seven or 10 or whatever minute exposure, and I'm bound to capture a ton of meteors. Well, unfortunately, that's not the best way to capture a meteor, even though it's like you know, you're, throwing out, you're throwing your net out there and you're just hoping to catch something. But if you want to capture a meteor as bright as possible, just like with flash, you want a higher ISO and a faster aperture always. So let's look at this last image here. You can see something up here in the corner, and we'll explain that in just a second. It's actually not a meteor. But anyways, let's look at the camera settings. I've got ISO 6400, F2 again, and 15 seconds. Now the reason I did this was because I wanted to capture fleeting fast objects as brightly as possible. If I had shot at ISO 200 or 100 again, this would have been barely visible, while the sky would have been the same brightness if I had you know, adjusted my shutter speed to be 400 or whatever seconds again. So that's basically the name of the game when you're trying to capture a meteor. You want as much light as possible during that fleeting moment when the meteor actually happens. And my favorite exposure length is usually somewhere between 15 seconds and 30 seconds or one minute long. Now if you go any faster than that, say if I had a f1.4 lens or an f1.2 lens and you know I had a camera that could go up to ISO bazillion or something, you know maybe I could get five second exposures and you would think well a meteor would be way way brighter if I were to capture it. But trying to capture a meteor in two second or three second exposures is actually very difficult. You're gonna burn up your shutter really quick. And believe it or not, I don't know why, but meteors always seem to pass right in that split second in between your exposures. So even if I were to jam my shutter down and take 15 second exposures back to back to back, you know what I mean? There's still gonna be that fleeting moment in between exposures. And at least for me, it never seems to fail that I always get lightning or the meteor or whatever in between my exposures. So that's why I like 15 second or 30 second or one minute long exposures. Now of course most cameras max out at 30 seconds. So usually what you need is a 30 second exposure, f2.0 or f1.4 depending on what wide angle fast aperture lens you have. And uh, ISO 3200 or ISO 6400 usually does the trick. Again, depending on what full frame or crop sensor camera you have, you know, it, based on if it can handle that ISO or not. 
so anyways, that's how you do it. All I'll do is I'll just click back to back exposures. And if I go over here and I'm going to click on this folder here, what you can see is that I've got uh, 227 images here and they're all the same image. And if I go through them really quick, you can see that I'm just basically waiting and biding my time and hoping that a meteor streaks through. Now you can see if I go back here to this main folder and I turn on my filters again, this is what it looks like, about an hour's worth of exposure. Of course, the, the stars are from a 15 second exposure and then I photoshopped in one hour's worth of meteorites and unfortunately, a lot of this is actually just satellites. And let's talk about that for just a second. If you look up here, you can see this little streak or this sparkle here and right in the middle is this sparkle. This is not a meteor, it's actually a satellite and the reason I can tell that is because it fades in and out equally. Look at the trail, the tail on this object. It goes equally in both directions and it sparkles at the very middle. What that is, is it's a slowly rotating satellite that has a very shiny, shiny solar panel or something and it just happens to point that solar panel at exactly the right angle so that it reflects the sun exactly at me, just like a mirror or a car windshield or something, you know? You ever get that really bright, bright reflection of the sun? That's what that is right there. It's just the satellite slowly rotating through the night sky and it just sparkles right there in the middle. And even if it doesn't sparkle, sometimes that's just a satellite as well. If you look at this, you can see a lot of these are probably satellites. Some of them are meteors. And the way you tell whether or not it's a meteor, well, let's look at this other image here that my friend Sean captured. This is definitely a meteor, and this is one of the biggest meteors that I've ever seen. This is uh, taken in Hawaii at the observatory on top of the mountain, and you can see that the sparkle, the flash, is at one end of the trail. That is kind of the dead giveaway that it is a meteor. And you can actually see the same thing in this panoramic image here. You can see that it streaks a long way and then it kind of flares up and then dies immediately right about here. There's a little bit of that last burst. If I zoom in, you can see it's got a lot of sharpening and a lot of noise reduction going on, but you can see how it trails in very, very gradually and then it just goes bam and explodes right there like that. So there you have it. That's my advice to you. What you want to do is get medium long shutter speeds in the range of 30 seconds or one minute long. And then you just want to start clicking photos back to back to back so that you don't miss any moment in the night sky. And unfortunately, I mean, you're going to have to shoot for an hour or two in order to catch anything. But if you have minute long exposures, that's only 60 images or 120 images. So unlike regular time lapse photography, you're not really burning your shutter that much. Of course, if you have an intervalometer or something, that's usually the easiest way to click photos back to back to back. Uh, but if you if you don't, then you know you could just put some tape on your shutter or a rubber band or something to just hold the shutter down at 30 second exposures and just let it click. So good luck out there, folks. I hope you capture something. And until next time, take care.